OpenAI just released a new tool called Codex, which is a software engineering agent that allows you to vibe code with it. It also comes with its own dedicated new model called Codex 1, which is apparently even better than the new Model 03. And like with any other AI update out there, there's a lot of hype and buzz around it. And since this is especially targeted towards automating software engineering tasks, there's even talks about how this is one step closer into ending software engineering as a career. So I wanted to take a closer look into this. So this is what it looks like. OpenAI calls this a cloud-based software engineering agent. It is integrated into ChatGPT and as you can see it very much looks like it. The main thing here is that you can connect it to your existing code base like your Git repository and perform tasks on it like writing code or making changes to your existing code base or run tests or even find bugs in it. The cool thing here is that it performs those tasks independently in an isolated environment so it doesn't potentially destroy your code base. And while it is performing any task, you can actually monitor in real time what it is doing. And when it's finished, you can then review the changes it made and decide if you want to pull those changes into your actual code or not. You can also configure the secluded environment of those tasks in a way that it matches your local environment as close as possible. And you can apparently also configure the agent to fit your coding style and how to operate under your preferences. And I have to say, all of that is actually pretty cool. So because of this impressive tool, there are now even more people who say that Vibe Coding is going to take over software engineering and development. And even in the comment section of the YouTube video unveiling this tool on the OpenAI YouTube channel, there were people who actually are currently students for like computer engineering who are questioning if they should actually finish their degree because of this. And I can completely understand the anxiousness that comes from this rapidly evolving AI space where there's seemingly an update every other day. And it really seems like these huge companies that have virtually unlimited money are trying so hard to replace developers. And this vibe coding trend just keeps playing into this, saying that now everyone can just create well-functioning code without any actual technical skill, using plain English to just prompt yourself through the development cycle. So basically just vibing it, hence the name. And then on the other side, there's the other camp of developers who are saying that that doesn't work at all, like actual development doesn't work like this at all. While the vibe coders are somewhat saying that the developers are not really facing reality here. But I do believe that there's a lot of biases here. At the end of the day, it's pretty hard to not be biased in any case. But I think that really goes in both directions. The thing is that most people that are in the vibe coding movement are mostly non-technical people. And I think a lot of them are influenced by the so-called Denning Kruger effect because there's actually a huge difference between I can write code and I'm able to successfully deliver production level software. And the most important part of software development is actually being able to think through a problem, breaking it down into smaller compartments, find a solution for those, being able to iteratively improve the solution, and then finally being able to bring all of that together in a coherently working software. And the most important skill you can have for that is actually your critical thinking skills. And generally speaking, I think that's actually the most important skill in the coming years that anyone can actually have because we live in a time of information overload actually. And that includes bullshit information as well. And being able to differentiate good information from bad information is absolutely crucial here. Coming back to Codex, I actually think it's a pretty cool tool. People behind it definitely understand the struggles of a software engineer and are quite keen on making their lives easier. And don't get me wrong, actually I'm quite excited every time a tool like this comes out actually. Since I'm an AI developer myself and also an AI enthusiast, also I do not enjoy looking for generic bugs or writing unit or integration tests or draft documentations or even create boilerplate code. Those things are actually tedious as hell. And if I'm able to reliably outsource those tasks to a tool like that, that would actually be great. Then I would have more time to focus on other things that I find more fun. For example, creating new features or God forbid even work less. A potential problem I see with this tool is the isolated environment of the code within the tasks. I mean, I get why they do that. You want to seclude it from your actual code so it doesn't destroy your code base. But when working with Git or any sort of version control system, 
what I, what I prefer is to have as little amount of branches as possible because once you merge all of this, you can potentially run into merge hell if you don't have something set up like a good CI CD pipeline or DevOps or something like that. So if you run with individual tasks that basically all have their own fork of their original code, I don't know how this is going to be able to reliably come together smoothly at the end without creating huge problems in terms of, in terms of merging. And the reality is that most software projects are like open construction sites on a highway where you need to be able to keep everything running while you make changes and being able to connect codecs to that so the task environment actually reflect the real ones is probably going to be really hard and challenging and would also just add a new layer of complexity upon that. And rolling this out onto software project would probably be a huge project in it of itself. And the next thing is that let's say you're working on a custom client software and their software systems more often than not is just complete chaos. And trying to integrate codecs into that just sounds to me like more of a liability than an actual asset. Not to mention that most companies do not want to send out their data to OpenAI. I mean, for new apps that you just start out fresh, a tool like this could actually be a game changer. Don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to vibe coding actually. I actually love to use it myself from time to time. So I do understand both sides. But the thing here is that if regular people can use vibe coding, then developers can do that too. There's a huge difference if a regular person is using vibe coding tools and if a developer uses them. AI or large language models actually, they work under the shit in and shit out principle. So if your inputs are bad, your outputs are bad as well. Vice versa, if your inputs are really good, your outcomes are better as well. So if you have someone who's very technical, who knows how to instruct these systems to create good code, who knows which kind of design pattern you might use or how to design the general architecture, then the level of quality that you can produce is just on a leak on its own. So the way I see it is vibe coding is probably be a definite part of software engineering or development as a whole. And the ones who use it will probably excel in how fast they can deliver a project. And the ones who don't are probably just gonna lag behind. So you probably need to absolutely be able to adopt to new trends and all of the developments that, ha that happen in the AI space. OpenAI said themselves that they want to speed up the development cycle for developers with tools like these in order for them to be able to focus on more important tasks and be able to outsource the tedious task to a tool like this. And I absolutely agree with that goal. I already do something similar with, for example, using Copilot when I create some Python code. And I think software engineering is actually not going to go anywhere anytime soon because you still need technical people in order to deal with all of this technical stuff. Saying that anyone can create a well-functioning app without any technical skills is for me too, way too much out there. Especially if I regularly see uh, people struggling with something as simple as a self-checkout at a grocery store. The thing is that most statements like these on social media are by nature always quite extreme because they're trying to gain attention. So the reason why people keep saying like it's over or this new tool is insane or XYZ is going to be replaced within one month or AGI is just two days away or whatever. That's because they want to create clickbaitable content so they can create traffic basically. And the truth like always actually lies somewhere in between. At the end of the day, no one can actually predict the future. Uh, same goes actually for crypto, same goes for the economy, how it's going right now, and same goes for AI as well. I mean, who knows, it can go in either direction at this point. But I would definitely advise people to be excited about AI rather than be afraid of it. Codex is currently only available for ChatGPT Pro, and I'm planning to do a comprehensive uh, either tutorial or like review about it when it comes out for Plus, because I'm definitely not going to use it at this price point. <coughs> So is vibe coding taking over software development? I would definitely say no at this point. So yeah, I hope this was helpful to you and I see you in the next one. Peace.